some legal stuff. Um, overview of what we're going to talk about. I'm going to explain a little bit about Venus gas MLI, where bubbles come from. We just heard a bit about that. I'm going to talk about how you measure them. And then what can they, VG, tell us about decompression sickness, uh, large experiments. Um, and uh, what can VGE tell us about decompression sickness for an individual diver? So decompression sickness is an injury caused by bubble formation um, in our body from excess dissolved gas um, when we get supersaturated, which occurs with a reduction in ambient pressure. So this is me testing my sense of smell before rapid home COVID tests were available. Um, I, I put this up here because I want to talk a little bit about bubble formation, familiar situation in a bottle of beer. Everyone here who's a diver has had this analogy before, probably so long ago that you've forgotten it, but it's a great one, so it's kind of worth thinking about again. So we have um, a bottle here that's capped. The yellow is the liquid. Uh, the clear at the top of the bottle is a gas space, and that's carbon dioxide in there under quite high pressure. And as a result of that, um, carbon dioxide has been dissolved at high concentration in the liquid. So this is the situation of a diver at the end of the dive. So here's a picture of the circulatory system. Uh, the blood vessels in red are the arteries that take oxygenated blood from the lungs out to our tissues. And then the veins in blue are the blood vessels that bring blood back from the tissues uh, to our lungs. We're gas exchange occurs. During a dive, we're breathing gas at high ambient pressure. Um, so the circulatory system is also picking up the inert gas, helium or nitrogen that we're breathing. It's being transported in the arteries to the tissue where it diffuses into the tissue um, at, in, at high partial pressure. So that's the situation of the uncapped bottle. When we release the pressure from the bottle by opening it, we reverse the situation. So this would be when a diver comes to the surface so they're now bringing gas at low, um, at low pressure compared to what's dissolved in their tissues. So those gases move um, from the tissues into the veins. They carry back to the right side of the heart, then pumped through the lungs where um, gas exchange occurs, and then back to the left side of the heart and oxygenated blood goes out to the body. But what also happens by coming to the surface is we reduce the pressure around our body. So that ambient pressure can be lower than the pressure of dissolved gases in our tissues. And that situation, or that state is called supersaturation. And that's the requirement for bubble formation. So of course, when we uncap the bottle, when we come to the surface, bubbles will form out in the liquid. So in our body, that's out in the peripheral tissues. And that probably happens after most dyes harmlessly. So this is an electron micrograph of tissue um, after decompression. Um, running diagonally through the middle of that tissue is a capillary, the very smallest blood vessel. And you can identify that because it's packed full of red blood cells. They're labeled RBCs. Those are the cells that are specialized in carrying oxygen to our tissues. Outside of that blood vessel, there's two two vacant spaces and one of them is conveniently labeled. And that bubble there is actually rupturing through the um, capillary wall and that bubble is migrating into the bloodstream where it will be carried away uh, in the blood into increasingly large variable uh, veins and then back to the right side of the heart initially and then eventually to the lungs where those bubbles will mostly be filtered out. So what I'm going to, it's at the heart where is the most common place for us to measure and look for VGE. So remote from where they're forming, but in the heart we're getting the drainage, the venous drainage from all, all parts of our body, so it represents what's going on everywhere. So this is an ultrasound image, a 2D echo image of the heart in a four-chamber apical view, not a very good one because I did it. Um, but we, you use an ultrasound probe positioned about here, and we're taking a picture through the four chambers of the heart in one dimension. But in ultrasound, we, the image is sort of upside down. The probe is at the top of that image. And then the image is oriented for the diver. So 
on your right is the left side of the heart, which pumps blood out to the body, uh, having come back from the lungs. And on your left is the right side of the heart, which is receiving the uh, blood flow from the venous system. Um, and that's where we would look for bubbles. That's where they come from. And then they would be pumped from there to the lungs, where mostly they'll be filtered out. So you won't see many on the diver's left. You'll see it on your left, on the diver's right. So what I'm going to do is, when I start this clip, is, is try and show you what bubble gradings are. We, when we look at bubbles, we grade the images on a scale of zero, meaning no bubbles, up to four, meaning as many bubbles as you can, um, as you can count. When I start this image, the diver will initially be at rest, and he'll have continuous bubbles going through the right side of his heart. So that would be a grade three um, bubble score. And then the diver's going to shake his leg vigorously, and that's going to um, cause a shower of bubbles from the legs to come up to the heart, and you'll see those come through the heart. You won't see the leg shake, but you'll see the image wobble um, when, when the diver's kicking powerful grade four bubbles coming through. So again, focus on uh, the, uh, image, the image to your left. So here we go. Um, continuous bubbles as bright spots, grade three. There's the limb shake, and, and then there's a powerful grade four um, bubbles going through more than you can count. So we talked about grade zero, grade three, grade four. If you'd ignored my instruction, and had looked really closely in the left side of the heart, you would have seen one or two bubbles go through that passed the lung filter and, and got into the arterial side. So that actually was grade one bubbles on, uh, on the left side of the heart. Um, that diver was perfectly fine. Um, so, oops, I didn't mean to do that. So you get to see it again. Now, oh, this is, uh, can you advance the slide back there? Because I don't, the pointer must be on it. Okay, uh, uh, other way, please. Okay, so we're going to put all this together, that what we've talked about in a uh, schematic. So on the, your left there is the dive profile. Um, so what you do during the dive determines how super saturated you get and what, what uh, bubbles will form in the tissue. So the most important thing is the depth time profile. So the longer you stay at depth, the more gas you take up, the faster you ascend, the um, more supersaturation develops. But other things are important, obviously, what gas you're breathing, how much oxygen it's, for instance, and then anything that affects blood flow. So uh, for instance, if any work that you do and what point in the dive you do it and what the temperature is, which affects blood flow. So your dive profile uh, influences the bubbles that form in the tissue. Those get into the venous um, blood, and, and some may form there as well. And, but we detect them typically at the heart, so it's a reflection there, those VGE are a reflection of what's going on in the whole body. And both bubbles in the blood, venous gas emboli, and bubbles in the tissue can cause different manifestations of decompression sickness if there's too many bubbles or they form uh, in unfortunate locations. So the important thing is, is that, um, I'm not sure. All right, oh, there we go. Um, VGE decompression sickness, that's the first point I want to make. We measure them for what they can tell us about decompression sickness. VGE are, are often harmless. As I said, that diver in the clip before was perfectly fine. Um, but we measure VGE because of, they tell us two things about what's going on with the dive profile and decompression sickness. So um, on the left there is the second factor, which is the VGE sort of capture what the dive profile is doing to bubble formation in our, in our, in our whole body. The more VGE we see in the heart, the more there are everywhere. And VGE are prognostic of decompression sickness. So the more VGE you have, the higher the risk your dive is. So I'm going to talk about that second factor first. That's the article where that cartoon comes from. So this is about 2,500 experimental dives done in the US Navy and for the Canadian forces, organized in what was the 
highest VGE grade that they resulted in. So across the bottom, across the x-axis, are the VGE grades that we just talked about, all of them except two, two's between one and three. Um, and then there's hundreds of dives at each of those, that resulted in each of those grades. And so we counted the number of decompression sickness and expressed it as a percentage incidence on the y-axis. So of the many hundreds of dives in these two data sets, I'll, I should explain that. The data set at the front is from Navy Experimental Diving Unit, and that uh, bubble's measured using 2D echocardiography, the same thing we saw in the clip. The data at the back are from the Canadian Forces DCIM, and the bubbles are measured by different ultrasound technique where you listen for the bubbles in um, a Doppler flow meter, but you grade them the same way. So uh, for all hundreds of dives that resulted in grade zero, no DCS at all. Um, if you have grade zero, particularly with movement, these are movement grades, um, that's dive. Um, grades one and two bubbles had about 1% incidence of decompression sickness. And grades three and four bubbles, the incidence of decompression sickness is between five and 10%, depending on your data set and how you've measured, measured things. Um, so uh, VGE, as it has appeared there um, down the bottom, are sort of prognostic for decompression sickness. High-grade VGE means a high risk of decompression sickness. But it's not perfect, and it doesn't mean much for an individual. So even if you have the highest-grade bubbles, if you had what um, I showed you in that previous uh, little clip, um, only 5 or 10% of people go on to get decompression sickness. So 90 to 95% of the time, you're perfectly fine with that sort of bubble load. But there is a relationship there. Now, what I'm going to do in this slide is um, look at data a different way. Um, rather than being dives into VGE grades, I'm going to look at dives of different width and what the bubble scores tell us there. And this is a very complicated slide, so I'm going to take a few minutes going through it. So I've got on the y-axis the VGE grades, and just in the same way we talked about it. Again, this is movement VGE grades. And all the, the dots on the graph are maximum VGE grades after individual dives. There's about 900 or 1,000 dives in this graph. So let's just look at the green data to, to walk through what we're looking at here. Along the x-axis, I've labeled each of these uh, dive profiles. So there's six dive profiles in the different colors. And it's experiments where we've done the same dive over and over again. So the green dive was repeated 192 times and resulted in three cases of decompression sickness. So that's what the three on 192 means. And I've ordered the dives from left to right in increase, increasing risk of decompression sickness. Each of the dots is the VGE grade. Now, put in a little bit of noise to move them left and right and up and down so they don't overlap each other. So that cloud of green dots down the bottom um, are all the grade zeros, all the dives that resulted in grade zero under that profile. And then above them are the grade ones, the grade twos, the grade threes, and the grade fours. And the red dots are the three DCS cases, the VGE grades associated with those three cases of DCS. Now, the box is just a summary statistics. So the bar in the middle of the box is the median grade, so the grade in the middle, two. And the box represents where 50% of the data is, the inner quartile range. So 50% of the data for that dive is grades one to three. And then all the other dives are represented the same. So what you can see here is two things about VGE. One is they're very messy. And that green dive, we saw every grade VGE after doing the same dive. And I guess I should reiterate that. This was experimental dives in a chamber in the wet pot where the dive profile was exactly the same. To the centimeter, to the second, well, to a few centimeters, to a few seconds, the, the, the profile was done exactly the same. The water temperature was the same every time this dive was replicated. The divers did the same amount of work on a bicycle ergometer on the bottom every time it was done. So that for all practical purposes, that's the same. But you get this huge variability in, in bubble grades. But if you look at all the data, there is a bit of a picture there that emerges. And so if you look on the dives on the right, the riskier dives, the inner quartile range of the VGE grades are towards the top. So generally, there's higher grade bubbles. And to the lower grade bubbles, 
generally the grades are a bit lower, except for that very safest dive, the zero out DCS and 96 dives that have fairly high bubble grades, but a little bit hard to explain. But basically the bubble grades are capturing the risk of the underlying profile in a very, very way. Now what I'm gonna talk about is this data, a subset of this data for the remainder of the talk. So I'm, go um, I'm gonna bit on show it a different way in the subsequent slides. Now let's go back to the green data set as an example. That dive was done 192 times, but there was only about 70 experimental divers who, who participated in that experiment. So some of the divers dived more than once. So two times, three times, four times, sometimes as many as 10 times. So th uh, this moved forward um, sort of without my knowing, so I'm, I'm sorry, but there we go, thank you. Oh. Um, so I'm gonna pull that data out and look at the times divers um, dive multiple times. So you know, I'll go to the next slide. And that's this data here. I just pulled out the dives where people did the same dive three or more times, and I organized it on, um, uh, for increasing VGE grades, so um, not by the dive profile, but every one of those vertical lines connects the VGE grades from one diver doing the same dive profile many, many times, usually at least a week apart, sometimes more often, but, and with no diving in between. So independent dives a week apart. Um, and again, I put some noise in there so the grades are moved up and down so they don't, the, each individual grade, if they're the same grade, the, those points don't um, uh, uh, overlap each other. So what you see, is there's a very small a handful of the people who will have the same bubble grade after repeated dives. So on the extreme left there down the bottom, there was three divers who had no bubbles every time they repeated the exact same dive. Now those three dives next to each other, those may be different profiles they did it on, but the profile that each individual diver did was exactly the same thing. Um, and then a few people had some of the higher grades. And then up at the top, uh, top uh, right, there's 10 or 12 people who had the highest bubble grades after every dive. So those are what we'd call high bubblers. But that's unusual. That's only a small fraction of the data. The much more common picture is like this diver I've indicated with the, the uh, red arrow. He did this dive, I think it's eight times and had every bubble grade that you can imagine, from none to complete wide out of the heart, depending on, you know, on different days, you know, week to week to week, as he did the dive, totally different bubble scores. And in fact, if you look at the variability, all that messy picture of VGE grades we showed before, 65% of that variability is because of uh, variability within the diver, it's not between divers. So, now I've overlaid in red on the same data the cases of decompression sickness. So there's fewer than in the um, earlier slide with the box plots because some of the DCS happened and people only dived once or twice. But the kind of gratifying thing is that the DCS cases, even you know there's this huge variability in VGE grades every time from week to week as people do the dives, when they get DCS it tends to be on the day they had their highest bubble grade. Um, except for this guy who's just in there to prove this is real data and I didn't make it up. Um, so it seems like we have huge variability in bubble grades, um, but we, it's still indicating our risk on that day. If we had a high grade, we're probably at higher risk. So what can we do with this information? So a couple things I wanna talk about as I wind up the talk is, can an individual diver use this information? And I don't really think so. So if we took this guy with the arrow I put down the bottom, he's done that dive and he has grade zero VGE, he's at very low risk, that, that's a fact, because you very rarely see DCS with zero grade VGE, but he might think, oh, I'm, I'm doing fine, I don't need to change anything about my eco, or maybe I could even be a bit more aggressive, maybe I could you know, increase my gradient factors, because uh, you know, I'm willing to accept a little bit of risk, but that would be a mistake because on another day, another week, he came back and did exactly the same dive, had grade four VGE and got bent, had decompression sickness. Something changes in the diver week to week, dive to dive. So you can't use this sort of information to customize your decompression and plan what you 
you next. I mean, and this is just an example of this diver. He had grade four bubbles. He might have thought, I have to stop diving or something, or, you know, I'm a high bubbler, um, or cut my gradient factors, you know, down to 60 or something. But on other occasions, he had no bubbles, and that was actually one of the very safe profiles. It was just one day he had higher VGE grades. So you can't use this information very, um, as an individual person, about what to do next. It does tell you that you're at, at relatively high risk if you have nice high bubble grades, but by the time you get that grade, it's usually an hour or two after diving, and you're probably going to ha either have decompression sickness if you're going to get it, or it's too late to intervene. But there's something here that's, uh, I think, fundamentally more interesting. This, it, it seems that the DCS follows DGE grades as we would expect, but those grades are hugely variable. So I think this, what this is telling us is that our personal individual susceptibility to decompression sickness varies enormously week to week, dive to dive, um, month to month. For something that we're not controlling with the dives, it's something that's happening either before the dive or something internal. And that has all sorts of implications, and I just want to for you to take home is, if you're doing your same dive using your same decompression practice that you're always doing, you've been used, doing it for years successfully, and you get symptoms of decompression sickness, don't ignore those symptoms thinking, I can't be bent because I'm just doing the same thing. It's always been safe. You might be on one of those high-risk days and got decompression sickness, so you always need to consider symptoms. So in summary, I think all these points uh, are evident. I made them the first three. The fourth a bullet I probably wrote really poorly, but I meant that the VGE can't tell a diver something that they can use going forward. It only tells them what's happened. It's an outcome. But I think it is telling us that our susceptibility to decompression sickness varies um, very, very widely dive to dive. Thank you.